Okay, everyone, so today we're going to talk about the nervous system. And truth be told, the nervous system is not as complicated. When you look at it in a flow chart, you'll see, sure, it's the control system of the body. But you can break it up into the central nervous system, also known as the CNS, brain and spinal cord, simply put. Um, as complex as the brain may be, as complex as the spinal cord may be, it is, they are located in the central portion, and uh, we'll talk more in detail about that another time. But the peripheral nervous system looks a little bit more complicated, but the peripheral nervous system has 31 pairs of spinal nerves, and let's look at those. Um, spinal because they come out from the spinal cord, and uh, they exit via these holes called foramina, or foramina, and there are 31 pairs here. Trust me on that. We don't have to count them. Those are ultimately going to go on to become... Um, nerves that are named for their region, and then they're also going to be a part of the autonomic nervous system, which is, we'll talk about in a second. The 12 pairs of cranial nerves you can't see here, but they do come out um, and mainly go to the head. There's one wandering nerve called the vagus nerve that we can, again, talk about in detail later. So the peripheral nervous system, 31 pairs of spinal nerves, 12 pairs of cranial nerves, uh, dividing those into somatic, which are sensory and motor nerves, and autonomic, which it happens automatically. It kind of comes from the word soma means body, and this um, this side is, uh, like I said, sensory bringing information in, motor bringing, um, sending information um, back out from the spinal cord. Autonomic, on the other hand, though, it's automatic. It happens without us thinking about it. Um, it's a pretty intricate system, pretty amazing system that can also be divided up into sympathetic, parasympathetic sections. And when we look at these two divisions, I guess not sections, but divisions, we have the sympathetic nervous system, which is our fight or flight. And if you're going to run away quickly because, oh, I don't know, you just robbed a bank and uh, you've got you've to move faster than you've ever moved before, this system kicks in. It also kicks in in times of stress, well, like robbing a bank and running away from the police. Um, and uh, we really work as massage therapists to decrease this dominance that can happen when, when we're really stressed as humans. Um, we rely on this system way too much and it can become dominant. And uh, the parasympathetic system, rest and digest, is the other division of the autonomic nervous system that massage therapy absolutely uh, has a profound effect on. We decrease heart rate, we decrease blood pressure, and that's the uh, parasympathetic nervous system's responsibility. And rest and digest says we can kick back, relax, get some restorative sleep um, when we have parasympathetic dominance, when we will have digestion that occurs because, again, our body's in a, oh god, dare I say, normal state. And in the more dominant and parasympathetic nervous system, we rely on our body to, to calmly go about its business. When we are in a sympathetic nervous state, and really um, both have a, have a pretty important function, if you, if you think about it, we survive as a species because we have the ability to run away from animals that were trying to eat us so many years ago one way to look at it. And parasympathetic is when we're trying to exist and relax and we uh, want to do yoga and we want to do massage to increase the parasympathetic nervous system. So, nervous system, central, peripheral, central brain and spinal cord, peripheral, we could argue everything else. Thanks for tuning in.